All right, hello everyone. What is today? Today's Saturday. <laughs> Today's Saturday, September 21st, 2024. So, um, the Lord told me to bring in my computer. I'm on the road right now, and I'm only at this hotel one night, <clears throat> and I usually don't bring in my my backpack with my laptop and all that. Um, but God told me to do so because he wants me to do a quick teaching. He wants me to address something. Um, so this is going to be a teaching. I'm sure you can see by the title and, um, the little bit of notes, I guess I'll put in the description box below if the Lord tells me to, um, as well as my email address for any curious questions when I am, um, released right now from my deliverance process to answer emails. Uh, please bear with me. Um, it's been a bit of a long day uh, and I am a little sleep deprived. So I'm going to open in prayer and then we'll get into the teaching that God wants me to do. So well, Father God Yahweh, once again, I just plead the blood of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth over my entire domain in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth. I ask you, Father God Yahweh, in the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth, will you please put a hot coal over my tongue and prevent me from saying anything not true, not coming from you, anything displeasing to you. Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, I ask, will you please breathe into me afresh right now, overflowing your Holy Spirit and your peace that surpasses all comprehension, emotions, moods, and circumstances. Holy Spirit, I ask in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, will you please baptize me afresh with your fire? Fill my mouth with your words. I just ask for your presence, Father God, Yahweh, Holy Spirit, Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth, will you please come and have your way here. Speak through me for the edification of all listening. Amen. Okay. So, <laughs> the title of the teaching that God told me to, to do, he says, What prophecy is not. And he said to put not in capitals. What prophecy is not? And he gave me three points to make. So, point number one. Prophecy is not all telling. Prophecy is not all telling. You can reference 1 Corinthians 13, 9. It says, we know in part and we prophesy in part. Lord, do you want me to get into how the Holy Spirit, how this all does work right now? Or just make the, the points and then make the point afterwards? Okay. Number two. Prophecy is not to be expected. And number three, he says, prophecy is not, whoop, I just hit a button on accident. Are we still recording? Yes. Okay. Number three, he says, prophecy is not on demand. And I was asking him what distinction he was making between number two and number three. To, it's not to be expected. It's not on demand. And what he's referring to with number two, it's not to be expected. He's referring to the mouthpiece, the person who is going to be receiving this from God directly to then go and speak it, communicate it, express it, convey it to other people. And I'm going to circle back and unpack some of this some more. Okay. Number three, prophecy is not on demand. And this, the distinction he's making here from number two, not to be expected, the mouthpiece, this is referring to the assembly. Okay. And that's how he told me to put it, the assembly. So not the mouthpiece, but the people, person or people who are going to be on the receiving end of this from the mouthpiece or through the mouthpiece. Okay. So, um, what do you want me to get into next? Lord, do you want me to break it all down or get into Holy Spirit? Okay. Holy Spirit, how God operates, how this all, how prophecy functions. Okay. So you have the spiritual gift of prophecy, and there's also words of knowledge and words of uh, warning slash wisdom. Okay. 
Those are three of the different spiritual gifts, okay? And there is the office of prophet, and there is the office of apostle, which includes all five offices, so it includes the office of prophet, okay? And again, if anyone's going to argue with me on that, no, it's not. <laughs> Scripture does not exclusively say that the office of apostle includes all five offices. That is a word of knowledge. That is a revelation that God gave me, and if you really think about it, it makes sense. And I keep repeating that point just to cover my bases, because I know I'm always going to have somebody rebutting what I say. Um... Remember, being a Christian is about not religion, but relationship with God, intimacy with God, okay? And Yeshua said, um, there's one or two passages, I think, where, you know, it says that the, the secrets of the kingdom are not given to everybody. I'm, I'm very much paraphrasing, but they're, they're only given to, to those who want the secrets of the kingdom, those who are worthy of the secrets of the kingdom because they are being intimate with the Lord, okay? And, you know, doing their best to do his will and seek his will and abide in Christ, okay? So how this works is God initiates, okay? Now, I'm not saying that we can't have prayer. Of course, we can have prayer. Prayer is when you know, um, prayer really is a two-way street between, it, it's a conversation, it's intimacy between a person and God, okay? And yes, sometimes we can initiate that conversation, and sometimes God initiates that conversation, but right now in this teaching, in this video, we're talking about the topic of prophecy, okay? Yes, Lord, what I'm hearing Yeshua remind me of right now is the passage that says that, you know, um, prophecy is the testimony of Yeshua Christ, okay? Prophecy is when God initiates the conversation. It's when God taps the mouthpiece on the shoulder and says, okay, and tells them a message, gives them a rhema, gives them a word of knowledge, gives them a word of warning, a word of wisdom, okay? And that can happen in different ways. Sometimes, some people, God will give them like a dictation message. He's been doing that with me for a couple years now, okay? Sometimes it's just a, like a very heavy impression that God will keep confirming. Sometimes it's just a knowing, okay? Sometimes it comes in the form of a dream or a vision or a supernatural experience, okay? But somehow, some way, God is the one initiating the conversation. He is the one saying, hey, I got something to share with you. And as my mouthpiece, you're to go and repeat this. Now, sometimes God will say things to someone and he doesn't want you to repeat it or he doesn't want you to repeat it yet. It's not time. There's there's a set time or, or whatever, okay? And that's part of how you steward the gift of... That's how you that's how you steward the spiritual gift of prophecy, word of knowledge, word of warning, wisdom. Um, that's how you steward the office of prophet and there and the office of of apostle, which includes the office of prophet, okay? Is as you become mature, you learn to steward these things that okay, God initiates the conversation and he shares whatever with you, and then it's your part, it's your responsibility then to say, Okay, God. Do I have the full message that you want to give me? Is there any more detail? Um, sometimes you might want to wait for confirmation. Um, and you might want to ask God, you know, okay, is this to be released right away? Do you want me to wait? Is there a, is there a particular place in time? You know, things like that, okay? That is how this works. So the mouthpiece, the person who is operating in the spiritual gift of prophecy, word of knowledge, word of warning, wisdom, and or the prophet, the apostle, okay? They don't know anything beyond what God told them. So you are not to be asking them for more information. You need to take those questions back to God himself, okay? So let me... Be careful how I phrase what I'm about to say. So it just, yeah, okay. So if, if, so for example, if God tells a mouthpiece that war is coming, and that's the only detail given, 
th- there, there's no detail of exactly when or exactly how or exactly where. You can't go to that person and demand more details. You can't go to that mouthpiece and demand more specifics or be seeking or pursuing more specifics from them because they don't know. They are simply the mouthpiece. They are simply relaying what God has told them to say. That's it. They are the mouthpiece. They are the tangible, audible, verbal mouthpiece that is just sharing what God spoke to them and told them to tell you, whether that's personally, privately, whether that's publicly, okay? So that addresses number one, what prophecy is not. Prophecy is not all telling. 1 Corinthians 13, 9, we know in part, we prophesy in part. This is why we are to be watchmen. This is why we are to be watching and listening all the time because one mouthpiece over here will have a little puzzle piece. And then another mouthpiece over here will have another puzzle piece. And another mouthpiece over here might have another puzzle piece. And that's what you got to be doing is you, you got to be watching and see, okay, because when, when God is speaking, okay, everything will be of one accord. Okay. One person might, for example, let, let's just continue with, with the war, war example. If God tells a mouthpiece that, okay, war is coming. Okay. So that, that mouthpiece says that very, very broad, very general. Right. And then another mouthpiece over here may say, well, I had a dream and in my dream war broke out and I, I knew it was winter time. Okay. So there's another little puzzle piece. They saw it. Okay. So also just a FYI. Okay. People who are, who hold, who are the office of prophet and, and also apostle because apostle includes prophet. Okay. Um, they can be seers, okay? A seer is like an additional, um, I don't know how to put it. They, they see things, okay? They, they, God communicates to them more so in like dreams and visions or, or just, or both, you know? Okay. Um, so that's what you got to pay attention to is, okay, you know, one prophet one, or, or one person operating in the spiritual gift of prophecy or word of knowledge or word of wisdom, they are coming at you and saying this, and then another one over here is saying this, and another one over here is saying this, and there will be like a theme where they're all connected, but they'll come at it from different angles and different aspects, okay? That's why it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 9, we know in part and we prophesy in part, okay? God is not going to give um, the entire 100% comprehensive future so to speak, like all the details to one person. Okay. As far as I know, <clears throat> Lord, is there anything else you want me to say on point number one? Okay. Moving on to point number two, what prophecy is not prophecy is not to be expected. It is not to be expected in the sense of like, you're constantly like looking for it as the mouthpiece, okay? So as a prophet and apostle, as someone who operates with the spiritual gift uh, or in the spiritual gift of prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, okay? You are not to be, I'm hearing the word like conjure. You're, you're not to be trying to like conjure it up all the time. Like it's not you, it's God. You wait for God to initiate it. You don't go looking for it. You don't go trying to conjure it, trying to create it, okay? Um, it's not a matter of like looking under every rock, so to speak. It's a matter of you, you, you live your life, you do what God is telling you to do. And when he is good and ready, he comes to you and he shares something with you. He initiates the conversation with you as the mouthpiece. And then he tells you, okay, go ahead and release this. Okay. It's not to be expected. Lord, am I explaining that well enough? Okay. Moving on. Number three, what prophecy is not? Prophecy is not on demand. Prophecy is not on demand. And like as I said before, God said um, the dis- the distinction that Yeshua is making here in these no- these notes that He gave me. Okay, so you've got the mouthpiece, and then you've got the assembly. The assembly is the you know those who in that moment aren't the mouthpiece. They're they're the ones receiving it through the mouthpiece. Okay. You are not to be demanding prophecy, okay? Um, 
And let me circle back, and this kind of kind of segues between number two and number three, between the mouthpiece and the assembly. The assembly is not to be demanding it. They're not to be paying for it. The mouthpiece is not to be promising it. The mouthpiece is not to be charging for it. Okay, first of all, money is not supposed to be involved whatsoever in ministry, period, period, period. This is That is why Yeshua made a cord, a, a, a whip of cords, and turned over tables, and scolded people in the temple, and, and all that, okay? You are never to make a profit from ministry. You are never to charge for ministry. Okay? And a lot of people, they're in trouble with God for just that alone. They, they might be doing everything else right, but even just ministry here, even just on YouTube, you know, okay? If they, if their channel is monetized, that's wrong. If they have a join button, that's wrong. If they're selling quote unquote Christian merchandise, that's wrong. Okay? Um, but yes, Lord, he, he wants me to punctuate how there are people who like advertise and promote and like try to sell, um, prophetic words or dream interpretation or any of that. Okay. Um, first of all, you can't promise that, you, that God's going to necessarily give you the interpretation of anything. You can't promise that God is going to give give someone else a, a, a rhema message through you. Okay? And you're, I mean, and, and even if he does, you're certainly not to charge for profit. Their, their money is not to be involved. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Okay? Ever. God has set up his economy with, with, with the tithes, and that's that. Um, this video is not about that. Okay? But... So money is not to be involved ever, okay? Period. Um, but you as the mouthpiece, whether you're seeking it for yourself, whether you're seeking it on behalf of somebody else, whether you're seeking it on behalf of whatever group of people, you may have whatever good intentions, but you're not supposed to be like trying to find it, trying to seek it, trying to conjure it up, trying to create it, okay? Because when you do that, okay? So this is point number two. Prophecy is not to be expected, as the mouthpiece, okay? You are not to, to expect it. God is really, he wants me to punctuate, um, right, okay, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. That is a, how do you want me to put that, Lord? That's a fine line, okay? I hear people come on YouTube and they say, oh, you know, I got up today and I asked the Lord if he had a word for me. I asked the Lord if he had a word for you today. I asked the Lord if he had a word for, for America. You know, whatever. It's a fine line when you do that. Because you are... Is inviting the right word, Lord? No. Giving opportunity. You are giving opportunity for evil spirits to pose as God and give you a fake, false message, okay? So, today is September 21st, 2024. I believe next month I will be finally ready to come on here and teach about all the different evil spirits and give you a definition of each one, how they manifest, what their indicators are, all that kind of stuff, okay? And I will have a Excel chart that you can download and all that, okay? But there is what's called the Kundalini Gang. Okay, there's the Kundalini gang. There's a whole bunch of spirits underneath there, including there's like counterfeit spirits for each part of the Godhead. Okay, for 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 Yeshua, for Yahweh, for Holy Spirit. Okay, and then there's also counterfeit spirits in that gang for each of the seven spirits of the Lord mentioned in Isaiah. Okay, um, and a few others. Okay, and that's just the Kundalini gang. Okay, there's also even higher ranking. There is the deception gang, there is the deceit gang, okay, and just lots of others, okay? So, you got to be careful when you're asking for a rhema from God. When you're asking for that, you are giving opportunity for evil spirits to, to pose, to try to impersonate God and give you some fake false message, okay? So, you really got to be careful about that, okay? This is why, again, it's why it's so important to get your deliverance, okay? 
Now let's go back to point number three. What prophecy is not? Prophecy is not on demand. The assembly, okay? You are not to be knocking on a prophet's door, so to speak, or someone that you know who operates in the spiritual gift of prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. You are not to be knocking on their door, so to speak, and saying, hey, can I have a prophetic word? Do you have a prophetic word for 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 me? You know? And, and going back to number two, the mouthpieces, you're not to be promising this. I, I, I've seen this. I don't see it so much anymore. But over the last few years, um, especially more so back in like 2020, 2021-ish, um, I saw a lot, and maybe 2022, I forget. But I saw a lot of people that would come on YouTube and they would advertise that, you know, oh, I've got 30 slots open you, you know, sign up now, sign up now for, for your personal prophetic word, you know, and I don't know whether they were charging or not, or they were requiring a donation. That's the same as charging. Okay. Um, don't, don't do, and that also goes for like Christian counseling and therapy and all that. Okay. Anyway, anyway. Okay. Prophecy is not on demand. It's not to be promised, and it's not to be demanded, and it's not to be expected in the sense of like, well, I want a word right now from from, from you, God, so, you know, I'm just going to make one up, you know, <laughs> or, or whatever people are doing, you know. It, I don't think people are making stuff up. Um, it's more so they're giving opportunity. They're giving like an open door for the enemy to come in and give you something fake, okay? If God wants to speak to you, He's God. He knows how to speak to you, okay? He'll give you a dream. He'll give you a vision. He'll give you a strong impression. He'll have something keep coming up, popping up, okay? You don't need to go looking for it. You don't need to go asking for it, okay? If God wants to speak to you about something or use you as a mouthpiece for something, he'll do that. And regarding the assembly, you are not to be expecting any mouthpiece to be giving you any more details than God has already given. If you have those questions, you're to seek him directly, okay? Test everything and keep what is good, okay? Your responsibility is to take the, the rhema back to God and discuss it with him for, for yourself. And then if he gives you any further revelation, then great. But you're not to be following up with that mouthpiece and say, well, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? All that mouthpiece knows if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. If they're stewarding their gift or their office correctly, they are, they've given you what God gave them. They have given you what God told them to give you. And that's it. And that that's where it ends. Okay. You then take it back to God and you discuss it with him. God, did this come from you? Yes or no? Okay. Yes, it did. Okay. Um, I would like, some clarification on this. So if it's your will, Lord, for you to reveal more to me on this topic, I request for you to do so. And then you just watch and wait and listen. And you just leave it at that with like a, like a open hand, like heart posture. Okay. Like you're not gripping at control. You're not grasping at control. You're not, you know, making a demand on even God himself. Okay. You're letting God be God. He knows best. He knows what you can handle. He knows if you're ready, okay? If he wants to reveal more to you, you make a simple request and you leave it at that. Lord, I'm very interested in such and such topic. I would love some revelation on this if you're willing to give it to me. If, if it's your will, if it's not your will, I accept that. And you move on with your life and you do whatever else he is communicating to you about. What, are, what is he telling you to do, okay? There's plenty of stuff in scripture alone for you to be living your life, abiding in Christ, okay? Go by what God has spoken to you. What has he spoken to you? Are you ignoring it? Are you recognizing it, okay? God may purposely keep you ignorant about whatever topic you're interested in because that topic for you might be an idol. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That topic for you might be an idol, a distraction, and he wants your focus somewhere else. Because that's what's best for you right now. That's what you need right now. Okay? This is the relationship with God is you trust him that he is God, not you. He knows best. His timing is best. He is, th there's, there's no one more wise than God. Okay? No one has a better strategy than God. No one is more clever than God. Okay? So again, from the top, what prophecy is not? Prophecy is not 
all telling. 1 Corinthians 13, 9. We know in part, we prophesy in part. It is not all telling. So do not have this um, expectation or assumption that a mouthpiece owes you anything more than what they're giving you. They don't. Their obligation, their duty, their responsibility in the kingdom is to share what God told them to share. And that's it. Okay? Number two. Prophecy is not to be expected by the mouthpiece, okay? Prophecy is given to you by God when he deems fit, how he deems fit, when he deems fit, and otherwise you're to carry on with your business, with whatever else he has told you to do, okay? Number three, the assembly. Prophecy is not on demand. You cannot demand it. You cannot require it. You cannot obligate someone to it. Just because you want a personal prophetic word doesn't mean that God's going to give it to you. Okay? God may know that you got a problem, like you're a control freak. God may know that you're not trusting him right now. You're not walking by faith. And that's why you want, want, want this prophetic word. You want all this information. You want to know the future. And that's a very fine line. Because when you want to know the future so bad, thank you, Lord. Okay? You are... You are getting real, you're, 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 you're towing that fine line of divination. That's what divination is, okay? Divination is when you want to know the future in, in general. You want to know the future regarding someone else. God, someone else is not your business, okay, first of all. Someone else is especially not your business. But even if it's just for you personally, that defeats the whole purpose of God, okay? That's the whole point. <laughs> That defeats the purpose of walking by faith. That defeats the purpose of trusting God. Okay? So if you're trying to defeat the purpose of having a, an intimate relationship with God and walking by faith, he's not going to give you any revelation. He's not going to give you any prophetic words. Because he wants you to learn how to walk by faith. Okay? Lord, have I covered everything you wanted me to? Is there anything else that you want me to cover? I believe that's, that's it. I believe I've covered everything. So, almost a half an hour. If you have curious questions, you are always welcome to come into the comments or shoot me an email. My email address will be below in the description box. It's always on my about page. Come with a posture of curiosity with curious questions. Um, again, right now, September 21st, 2024, I'm still um, going through the tail end of my own deliverance process and God has me not responding to any emails or comments right now, but as soon as I am released to, I will. So just know that I'm not ignoring you, okay? Um, I bless you all in the name of Yeshua, the Christ of Nazareth.